The purpose of this video is to illustrate uh, one problem that's not all that common, but it, it almost solely depends on costumes and armor. So the problem that a lot of people face with figures that have designs that lend to robes, uh, sometimes capes, uh, even sometimes shoulder pauldrons, loincloths, all kinds of designs like that is the traffic cone problem. The traffic cone problem means that you can't move the legs. So to illustrate this, I'll show you a druid here because he suffers from it greatly. See, Hasbro actually did give us a bit of a cut here. However, it just doesn't work. For example, if you want to raise his leg, look at how it gets forced down by the outfit. You could move his leg out there, but I don't see Druid kicking anyone. I just want to see him to be able to part his legs. Not anything, you know, extreme. So what I plan on doing is cutting. One thing that I will say about these designs is that because they're usually based on practical designs, is there will be lines for you to follow, to cut. You just have to find which ones. Merman here, same thing. The loincloth here is awful hindering. You move the foot up and it automatically moves down. really he can do it to the side which is nice but you cannot get out to the front like i want to for a front kick or even some sort of uh, stepping stance it's merman you should be able to get him in a captain morgan stance he's pretty much as pirate as he-man and motu get now a solid example of this is my build a figure dormammu uh, i did it with this guy a while ago he was limited in a few places including here you can see i made cut marks here they're not the cleanest but they worked and because of that i can get his leg fully upright well not fully but as much as you need dormammu to go <laughs> uh, if you take a look at the shoulder pauldrons it was the same thing this upper piece here for anyone that has this build a figure you know that it comes as one solid piece which completely hindered his shoulder going any further than that. So I made a cut inward that way, and that allowed me to lift his arm as high as I wanted to go, which could work for certain spells. I mean, you weren't even able to do this. And to me, that was kind of ridiculous that he couldn't even just hold his hand outright. However, Duomamu is done. I kind of want to show you guys how it's done in person. So step one is I'm going to heat it. Most of the time, this will be soft plastic, so it reacts very well. And heating it will make it more tender, easier to cut. Now, standard scissors can work, they will cut, but the problem is that they're long and narrow, only going one direction. So we're only gonna be able to cut to a certain height before we have to turn, because you could go straight to about there, then you have to start curving. So this will only get us to about, yeah, it's, it's actually not even cutting through. So, back to the sprue nippers. I try to kind of stick with the side and then just, like I said, follow the line. I might look for sprue nippers that just have longer teeth because this definitely works, but the more cuts you make, the more chance you have of an uneven surface. So.
Yeah, see, it looks a little chewed up. However, the articulation is now what we want. See how it's not forcing the leg to go down? That's because we have all this opening here now. So I'm not going to leave this like this. Uh, now that it's flat, I could actually lay it flat and then with an X-Acto knife, pretty much cut it until it's smooth. Bear with me, I don't know if I could get this on camera, but I'm gonna try. That's a lot smoother. Now let's see if I can get this edge. It's probably going to be a little harder. <laughs> you kind of wish you could take the whole thing off, but I, I don't want to risk uh, disconnecting the, the upper torso here and then slipping the legs out. It's just going to turn this into a much bigger job. Could probably just cut it against itself from this angle yeah that's actually working that's where the heat's coming into play it's still very warm i can i can feel it it's not too hot to touch but it's warm enough that we're getting cutting assistance like i said this isn't that clean of a job but we're definitely getting it done and you know once the figure's standing you're barely gonna notice the difference so for example here we have his left side is cut the right side is not now because of that this side does look better but you can't move this leg. So you have an option. You could leave it here so he has one leg to move around and the other one can stay. Or you could do both, this way it's symmetrical. But to be honest, see like this doesn't break character or look weird to me at all because he's got the black with the red accents and then he's got the black legs underneath. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now let's see if we have the same luck with Merman. Like I said earlier, uh, it's almost like you have your guiding lines. You pretty much know exactly where to cut. I mean, this is, this is seaweed looking. I like the design. I know where to go. I'm gonna try to go with the design here. All right, there's the chunk. We might not even have to remove it. No, we already got rid of the most of the pressure there. So his leg is being forced down much less now. We want to get rid of it. Actually, yeah, I'm going to get rid of it. And once again, it, it doesn't even look bad. From, you know, shelf distance, you won't even notice it, right? And then up close, still doesn't look terrible. The only reason why you get, like, the least bit of black is, is just because you're looking at uh, the shadow that's being casted by the top. But, you know, we didn't damage anything. We're just adding articulation. Let's see what we could do with this foot now and... Can't get 
<laughs> oh my god, it's such a struggle with this leg trying to get it to lift. <laughs> Meanwhile, this leg goes all the way up that way. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute. I'm going to finish uh, both of the right sides and then just give you a little final evaluation, maybe some photos. So we're pretty much done for this round. Uh, like I said, Dormammu was done before, but I just wanted to show him off. Like I said, if anyone has this Build-A-Figure, please compare. You'll see what I mean about the shoulder pauldrons and the uh, whole loincloth deco there. So Druig actually turned out better. Uh, I put him in a different position with the cloak. I actually had him this way, and I lifted the cloak up against the table and then cut away. I got a much smoother cut this time. You can barely, you could barely see any ridges here. So, if you can maneuver the cut in a good position, you can get uh, a much cleaner cut. Like I said, heating is a great tool. Uh, an X-Acto knife is definitely the way to go. Um, but for the initial cutting, you'll probably want screw nippers. Sometimes scissors work, but they actually didn't work for me at all today. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to look for screw nippers with longer teeth. But either way, uh, patience, uh, safety, definitely be mindful. Cut away from yourself, not towards yourself, uh, especially if you have a new sharp blade. And last but not least, Merman here. I actually took it another step forward and I cut... Once again, well within the lines provided from the sculpt, uh, I cut into to into the loincloth to make it look more like separate pieces. Uh, like you can tell from the rear, this is kind of more how it looked, uniform with the line work. You could paint this and bring out the colors and pretty much get the same effect, but I, that won't give you any added articulation. If you actually cut it like I did, you, once again, you'll be able to actually move, uh, lift the legs, spread the legs, and get any sort of pose you want. 